It's 2022 and the CTOs of Amazon's competitors are still being confused as mid-level engineers by Amazon's algorithms. Perhaps this is just because Amazon's interview is just way too strenuous that even the CTO of Microsoft, Azure, let's be real, couldn't pass their coding interview. I guess we're all trying to just fake it until we make it and pretend that we're not all inexperienced engineers. So really, what are the dead giveaways of an inexperienced software engineer? If an algorithm can't even seem to detect the difference between a CTO and a mid-level engineer, how can we detect the fact that we have leveled up from an inexperienced engineer to one of a more senior level? Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about those dead giveaways in today's video by me, the Seattle Data Guy. One way to detect a inexperienced software engineer is to find someone that never pushes back on any requests from any management person whatsoever. I once told someone that really almost anything is possible with code. Code, for lack of better terms, is essentially magic. Okay, it's more math and logic, but let's be real. If we showed kings and queens what programming could do a thousand years ago, we would all be burned at the stake as witches and sorcerers. So for lack of a better term, code is essentially the equivalent of magic. As Thor would say, what you call magic, we call science on our planet. And that's just it. We have literally used code to do things like land on the moon. And one day we'll use it to probably have colonies on Mars. It's literally allowing us as humans to just take productivity and take the abilities of everything that we know to do just about anything. But there is one massive limitation, our time, resources, and budget. Okay, that might've been more than one limitation, but at the end of the day, we can't take care of every feature request. We can't change every button to a different color and move every window and text to a different corner of the page. There is just not enough time in the day and there's just not enough programmers. So if you don't take the time to understand the value of every request, from a business perspective, it's kind of a dead giveaway that you're just an inexperienced programmer that doesn't know how to say no yet. Or more importantly, at least ask for the business context of what these requests are. Being able to push back shows some sign of maturity. It shows that you understand that you can't make everyone happy. This is something applicable to a lot of other fields, but I think in particular with programming, our skill is so unique because it allows us to kind of build just about anything that everyone wants a piece of it. Every manager wants to drive their vision. Every director has some new tool or concept that they want to implement, right? Everyone wants to implement machine learning or some new concept because that's what everyone else is doing, at least according to every Medium article. So an inexperienced programmer will probably not ask any questions and just take on more and more tasks till they finally become overwhelmed. And the truth is many of us have been there and probably still do it occasionally. Hopefully we eventually have those hard conversations with our managers, directors, whatever it might be, our stakeholders and tell them, hey, you know what? We actually can't deliver this product because of X, Y, Z. And that's something you start learning, I think in general, as you get better, is just you can't take on every project. You don't have a million hours in the day and you need to ruthlessly prioritize what you do. Now that you've pushed back on your request, you might think, hey, I'm a more experienced engineer, right? Well, the next question becomes, how do you actually approach the problems that you've been asked to fix? Most inexperienced engineers will overcomplicate their solutions. Uh, we often reference this as over-engineering solutions. Or if you were a senior Russian engineer at the last company I worked at, you quaintly put it that, uh, Ben, your solution is a little too elegant for this problem, which is just a polite way of saying that you've over-engineered the solution. I've actually noticed that this is a trend amongst most inexperienced workers is that we just have this desire to put everything we've ever learned into every solution we've developed that we just have no wisdom or thought process in terms of what doesn't belong in a solution. You know, suddenly a very simple CRUD solution has a streaming component for some reason in it. Even though all that really needs to happen is you need to take, you know, someone's username and sign them in. But for some reason we decide we need streaming and machine learning and every other which tool we've ever learned because we want to show off how brilliant we are to the execs only to realize we are creating mountains of technical debt, as well as honestly, uh, useless features. Having the wisdom and discernment to only develop code that does exactly what it should and not, again, putting too much fluff and unnecessary features into a solution really does take a lot of experience. 
May this be because we're overly arrogant when we're younger and we just want to show off everything that we know, or because we just don't know any better and we're naive to the fact that every line of code just adds future problems and not future solutions. It's something of that nature and you just need to slowly overdevelop all of your solutions, be forced to maintain them for multiple years and realize this is not sustainable. The less code you can write, the less complex code you can develop, likely the better solution. You don't need to write a relational database from scratch, but instead you should probably just learn how to utilize MySQL or Postgres well, rather than redeveloping a whole new type of database because you think you have a better solution for your one use case. Picking the right solution and not over-engineering whatever you're developing is a very difficult thing for all of us to do. Sure, there are a lot of different routes that we can take, but overall, there's probably only one or two really optimal ones and the rest are just, again, a lot of fluff and unnecessary work. Here is another way you can look at it. Perfection is not reached when there's nothing more to add, but instead when there's nothing more to take away. That's the truth. It's often you need to remove all of this extra stuff that you're thinking about and just creating a simple solution to write good code. Otherwise you might end up with a combination of an overly abstracted, overly developed solution that is almost impossible for people to maintain in the future. And as a consultant, I've seen this multiple times where for example, someone developed probably in the range of 60 to 70 scripts or Python kind of utils, all to do something that a BigQuery operator in Airflow was already developed to do, which was create some sort of materialized view, again, in BigQuery. And the question becomes, why? To me, it just shouts inexperienced programmer. And again, we've all been there the same way we've all been at that place where we all wondered, why do standards and linters even matter? All they do is make it very difficult for me to put in some sort of like PR or just diff because every time I put it in, I have like 30 automatic requests for changes of diffs because apparently I need to indent something or capitalize some variable or something of that nature. And we're all wondering and scratching our heads and just thinking about how much faster this would all be in terms of development time if I could just push code regardless of how I name my variables. I mean, who cares if I name my variable I or J? We all use that in college, so who cares about I or J? But that's just it. Making sure you have standards, make sure your code is maintainable long-term. And when you're an inexperienced programmer, I think again, we all think back to how we programmed in college and we were putting out websites in weeks and suddenly we can't even change the data type in a database for a month because we have to talk to 30 teams and have giant change requests just to do a very simple thing. But imagine how much worse that would be if you didn't have standards, if you weren't able to go through your code and quickly make changes or run some sort of code mod because you have very standard code that is very easy to change. That's one of the many roles of linters and coding standards is they keep code very easy to understand for future developers so that if you have to make giant changes, migrations, make quick fixes or update something, it's very easy to understand because it's all consistent. If one person names their variables one way, another person uses some other coding standard, you're not gonna know what you're looking at as you're looking through various people's workflows. Is something more of a public variable or method? Is something more of a private variable? How would you really know if you don't know the standard of programming? Yes, upfront, it might feel like linters and standards slow down programming. It makes it difficult to get PRs and diffs through your code reviews, but it also ensures long-term that you have easy to change code, as well as easy to understand code for future developers who have never looked at it before. So while the inexperienced programmers might whine about all of these standards and wonder why are we doing all of these dumb things, the experienced engineer is very aware because they've done 20 migrations at this point and had to maintain code for decades. And they understand that if that code has standards, it's just so much easier and nicer to maintain long-term. Now, just like your favorite shonen anime, Another sign that you're likely an inexperienced programmer is you're always chasing the next power up or more importantly, the next tech hype. Maybe it's AI, maybe it's machine learning and big data, cryptocurrency, whatever it might be, you just need to jump on that sweet, sweet trend because your 250K salary that you're making at a FANG is just not enough for you to retire apparently. So you need to figure out how to make that buku dollar, million dollar salary. 
but it's more important probably to create solid fundamentals that will carry you throughout your whole career rather than chasing every next technology trend. Remember, the true savior of Naruto Shippuden was none other than a equivalent of a gym teacher, Guy Sensei. And he was really just a master of the basics. So be a master of the basics first before you start chasing trends. It will help you more quickly adapt to these trends as they come along because you'll know how to make good decisions on implementation. I mean, a lot of the gaps that, for example, data scientists face in terms of machine learning is understanding how to deploy code, which if you've got solid DevOps skills, you can fill that gap. And that's because their focus was more on the trend of data science and not on actually deploying code. Of course, these are actually two different specialties, so I shouldn't even compare this to. But again, if you're a programmer focused more on maybe chasing data science because you think that's the cool new thing, but you never actually learn how to deploy your code well, there's going to be this gap that you could have filled and become an extra special machine learning engineer versus just someone who has this giant gap. Obviously, if you work in technology, you do need to balance learning new things as well as, you know, making sure your basics are good. But if you're constantly chasing trends and never actually perfecting anything, you're going to have giant gaps because it's going to be too difficult to do even the basics. That's why when I see cryptocurrency developer with only six months of experience, I often question their core basics. The funny thing is these are not even the most obvious signs that you are an inexperienced programmer. There's actually one sign, the biggest sign that you are an inexperienced programmer that for some reason, a lot of people at FANG seem to show off to no end for some reason or another. And it's just the clear sign that you are not that experienced as a programmer. What is this sign that you are an inexperienced programmer? You're probably asking on the other side of this video. Well, here it is. Inexperienced programmers in particular have this one common trait, which is they all seem to create YouTube channels. 